A good Chromebook should be a relatively simple device and it should be able to do everything that you could ever want a simple computer to do without fuss. And a simple device deserves a simple review. So here's what I think you should know about this new Chromebook, the Asus CX5400. Not to be confused with the Asus CX5, which this is sometimes called because an Asus CX5 came out earlier this year and it was quite different to this one. So that's confusing. I mean, you were this close to a naming scheme that made sense, Asus. This close. It's a premium 14 inch convertible Chromebook, very similar to previous models like the C436 or the C434, which I have right here and I like it very much. If this new model does everything that this one did and maybe slightly better, then I'm gonna be a happy fellow. And spoiler alert, it does. The display is basically the same as those previous models. It's a nice 16 by 9 1080p touchscreen. It's unlikely to wow you, but it's certainly no slouch. Asus is nailing the build quality. It feels exceptional. This is one of those very, very solid kind of feeling laptops. Uh, it feels strong and sturdy and reliable. And honestly, if it can survive as many embarrassing drops as this one over here has had to, then it's another minor engineering miracle. All the usual good ports are here, a couple of super capable Thunderbolt 4 USB-Cs, a USB-A, headphone jack, and SD card slot, which continues to protrude slightly when filled, and I'd prefer it didn't, but hey, no biggie. The trackpad is bigger and better than most Chromebooks I've used. The keyboard is very nice to type on. The keys are soft and have a good amount of travel. This is the opposite approach to those MacBooks where the keys hardly move at all when you press them. These ones move. However, I do have to say I ever ever so slightly prefer the keyboard on the old C434 compared to this one. The keys on this one were just so good, slightly more reassuring and firm. And this is the only time in this whole review that you'll hear me insinuate that anything about this one could be a step down from that one. I'm enjoying how the latest Chromebooks seem to have this screenshot button function key up the top, so you can just hit that to take a screenshot. I always forget what the actual other keyboard shortcut is for screenshots, so it's nice to just have the button there. There are a handful of nice little touches like that. For example, the power LED light flashes orange when the power is low. I'm jazzed to have a stylus stowed away on this Chromebook. It can be a tad tricky to pull out sometimes when the laptop's out flat. Um, this is a USI pen which recharges while it's stowed away in there. And I like having it there because I do regularly, if it's there, do a little doodle and sign some PDFs. So it's nice to have. Flipping over into tablet mode feels great on this one. It snaps together nice and clean there. It's a great experience, which is an improvement from the C434, which I'll show you. Just hangs there a bit limp, doesn't magnetically snap together. Of course, it's kind of bigger and heavier than you'd ever want a tablet to be, but I like having this function. Another nice thing to have is this physical privacy shutter, which you can slide over the camera when you're not using it. In this era of always connected internet devices, it's a nice touch for added security and peace of mind. And speaking of the camera, it looks like this and sounds like this. Pretty much the usual laptop fare. And the speakers sound better than I expected. I mean, not that laptop speakers ever sound that good, but these are certainly better than my previous Chromebook. As far as I know, so far, this is the only fanless Chromebook with an 11th generation Intel processor. I like fanless because of the benefits to size, sound, weight, dust, and battery life. I'm willing to take the added cost and performance hit, especially in Chrome OS where rarely am I pushing the thing to its limits. And it can get a little warm sometimes when you're using it, but I'm cool with that. I got the model with an i3 CPU and eight gigabytes of RAM, but there are also options out there with up to an i7 CPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now you're only gonna need that if you're doing something pretty hectic in Crostini. This system is fast enough for everything I do. I can have an external monitor plugged in, a dozen tabs open, Audacity running, and be editing in Wii Video all at the same time, and it doesn't miss a beat. They seem to have thrown in quality parts all round with fast NVMe storage. My model has 128 gigabytes, but others have more. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. The Bluetooth was honestly a bit of an issue on the C434, and headphones would drop out kind of regularly, and that definitely seems like it's improved on this one here. So far, I have experienced a couple of little bugs like it not turning on when I open up the lid, so I have to hit the power button, and Netflix throwing up an error or two while watching things. 
uh, but I'm assuming that those are just temporary bugs because it's a young and fresh faced device. In the end, this is only a worthy upgrade for me because I've been chomping at the bit for some more RAM for Crostini tasks and a stylus for some drawing. Aside from that, this is just a really nice Chromebook and it's not gonna wow anyone who already has a really nice Chromebook. These subtle incremental changes that Asus have made are cool and sweet and appreciated, but that's all it is, incremental changes. And if you don't mind having a fan spinning on your CPU, then you can get more for less with devices like the Acer Spin 713. But if your heart is set on a fanless Chromebook, this CX5400 gets a thumbs up from me.